Hi everyone, you want to learn how to make these effects in Blender? Then keep watching. We are going to break down this video into two parter. In part one is the blue blast. I will be explaining the creation of the objects and shaders needed, the animation of all of these objects and the shaders. And in part two, create the impact frames, creation of the objects and shaders for the second explosion phase, and last, the animation of those objects and the shaders. Before starting, I want to give a shout out to this artist on Pinterest, which I inspired myself of to make this effect. Feel free to use everything I made or use individual portion of it and make your own effects. We are going to start by creating the beam, the three shock waves, the explosion spiky sphere and the dust effects in Taurus shape. All right, let's get started. Go to Blender, Shift A, create a cylinder, scale it up on the z-axis. Now go to the shader tab, select the cylinder you created, make a new material, add an emission node, a transparent BSDF node, a color ramp node, and a mix shader node. Choose the color you want for your emission, increase the strength to your liking. Plug the transparent, the emission node, and the color ramp to the mix shader node, the same order I do, and plug the mix shader node to the material outputs. Make sure Bloom is selected in the Render Properties tab. I will do these few steps repetitively for other shaders for the next objects, so I may speed it up in the future. Now the cylinder looks too perfect geometrically. We want to make it less even and a bit more raw. For that, go to the Modifier tab, add a Displace modifier, create a new texture, make it a noise texture, go to Edit Mode, press A to select all vertices, right click, and subdivide it to follow roughly the proportions you see on my screen. It does not have to be exactly the same. Press tab to go back to the object mode. Now you should see the beam is not as straight anymore. Feel free to tweak the strength and mid-level value of the displace modifier if you want something different. For me, it works fine. Now bring your object above the camera that will be useful for the animation part later. Let's move on to the shock wave effects. Shift A, add a cylinder, go to edit mode, make sure you have X-ray toggled on and start resizing the top and bottom vertices as I'm doing. The idea is to have a cone shape. Once you're happy, select all vertices and subdivide it four times. Then resize the vertices once more to give it a rounder edges. Go to the shading tab. As previously mentioned, add an emission node a transparent BSDF node, a color ramp node, and a mix shader node, and plug them together. Change the color ramp value to have a white value in between black values. This will be useful for a later step. Add a gradient texture. Ctrl T to have a mapping node. Connect your gradient texture to your color ramp. Now add a noise texture and a mix color node, and change the mix color node to multiply. Tweak your color ramp value so that it aligns with the middle of the cone. You can play with the scale values of your noise texture to give it a raw effect. For me, point 0.1 is fine. If your effect is vertical, change your mapping rotation value to 90 degrees. For me, it's on the Y axis. Add a separate XYZ and a value node. Plug them to your location value in your mapping node. Now by tweaking the value of your value nodes, you should have the shock wave that travels on the set axis. Change your material blender mode to alpha blend. This will make the black parts transparent and keep only the shock wave. Feel free to play with the texture value and to adjust the color to your liking. We will now make the spiky sphere object. Create a sphere, apply it the same material than the one for your blue beam, open your object data properties create two new shape keys, turn the value of the first shape key to one and go to edit mode. Start grabbing your vertices by pressing G and move them. There is no right way to do this step. Be creative and try to create a spiky sphere. I'll speed up what I'm doing. Then go back to object modes so we can edit the second shape key. Change the value of your first shape key back to zero. Turn the value of the second shape key to one 
and go back to edit mode. Select all your vertices and change the scale of your sphere on the z-axis to make it more oval. Tweak your vertices to make lower spikes. Go back to object mode and now you can play with your two shape keys and edit their value to get a sort of electrical spiky effect. Moving on to the next object, we are going to work on the store's shape. It's a sort of dusty donut that expands with the explosion. Create a torus, go to the modifier tab and add the subdivision modifier. Change the value to 3 for both the viewports and render. Then add a displace modifier. Create a new texture and make it a Voronoi texture. Go back to the modifier and change the strength to something negative. So it looks like what I'm doing on the screen. Right click and shade smooth. Then play with the size and intensity value in the texture and in the modifier the strength and the mid-level value to have a result similar to mine. You can try to start off of my values and tweak them. In the texture I have an intensity of 0.2, a size of 0.12. In the modifier I have a strength of minus 0.5 and a mid-level of 0.035. Once you're happy with the results, move to the shading tab. At this point, you know the drill. Add an emission node, a transparent BSDF node, a color ramp node, and a mix shader node. And plug them together as previously. Add a shader to RGB and diffuse BSDF to your color ramp. Change your emission value to your liking. Mine is 80. The color ramp will help us give it the effect of a light projected onto the donuts. The darker value will be the sort of dusty color and the blue value will be the light projection. For you to see better what you're doing, position your light source at the center of your donuts. Select the object that is generating the shadow, go to material settings, in shadow mode select none. Then change your color ramp from linear to constant. This will give it a more tunish effect. Now we will do the sphere that flicks, add a sphere, and apply the same blue material than the beam and the spiky sphere. Et voilà. At this point, you should have all objects we need for this first sequence. Now, let's animate everything. All right, now we're starting the animation. I want to start by saying that this step is subjective. You may adapt everything I do, but the key thing you need to ensure proper pacing. I will also show some cool effects you can achieve with some additional modifiers. Feel free to check my original video on YouTube as a reference and move frame by frame using comma or the dots of your keyboard. Now we are going to start the animation at frame 5. Select the blue beam object, press I and choose scale. Move a few frames later, two in my case, and add another keyframe and make the beam hit the floor by scaling on the Z axis. Make sure you have your records toggle on. We'll move on to animate the shockwave. Reposition the shockwave to be just above your sphere and adjust the scale as necessary. Keyframe the value nodes. I am using an empty to animate the value through a driver, so I have my animation in my nonlinear animation. But honestly, it just makes things more complicated, so just pick the option you prefer. Animate it so the shockwave starts being visible on frame 6 and ends on frame 15. Again I give you my frame numbers just as a reference but adjust the pace to your liking. Then shift D and duplicate the shock wave two times. In the shading tab create a new instance of your material for each object. The idea is that you want to start the animation by one frame later for each shock wave. Once you did that move the keyframes of the second shock wave by one frame later and by two frames for the third one. You should have your shock waves starting one after the other, like on my screen. We will now animate the donut over roughly six frames, but first create a new empty, go back to your displace modifier, change coordinates to objects and select the empty you created. As the donut moves, the coordinate of the noise texture will change, which gives it a nice smoky effect. Now the spiky sphere. Keyframe it so the spiky sphere starts to grow one frame after the beam hits the floor, scale it up for that. For bonus style points, you can also keyframe its shape keys. 
In my case, frame 9, my spiky sphere reaches its maximum size. Now to scale the donuts, press S, then Shift Z, so it scales on everything but the Z axis, and animate it 6-7 frames after it starts. You can also play with the curves to amplify the exponential effects. I also ended up retweaking my nose texture value to make it less sharp. Now let's animate the camera. We will give it a nice shaky effect as the beam hits the floor. Add a keyframe to your camera, go to the graph editor, click on the right axis on which your camera is going to shake. In my case it's X. Add a modifier and if you don't see the modifier tab in your graph editor, press N. Then add a noise modifier. Tick the restrict frame range so it starts just as the beam hits the floor and make it last a few frames. In my case, 8 frames. Moving back to the spiky sphere, we want to give it an explosion effect. For that, add an explode modifier and add a new particle system. Make sure the particle system is above the explode modifier. Lower the number to 100 and change the start and end frame. This will dictate when the effect starts and ends. Change the lifetime to 4 frames. You will see if you now play the animation, your particles will fall down. To remedy that, we want to add a force field. Shift A, go to force field and choose force. Go to the physics property and change the strength of your force to 500. This should push your particles away. Also make sure your force field is at the center of your donut. Once you are happy with your particle settings, make sure to bake your particle system. It's under the cache dropdown. Particles is a very resource heavy, so caching it will help your computer not burst into flames. We will be using this effect a few more times, so remember to always cache your particle effects once you're happy with your settings. And you can always delete the bake and start again anyway. Now we will animate the sphere to give it a flicky effect. For that we will use the same shake methods than for the camera. Add a scale keyframe to your sphere, go to the graph editor, press N and add the noise modifier. Change the strength value to 5, then copy the modifier and paste it for each other axis. This will make it look like the sphere size is changing randomly. Now let's tidy up the animation and animate the visibility of each object so they appear only when they are needed. For that go into the object property and keyframe the viewport and render so your spiky sphere disappears after frame 18. Make your donut appear on frame 9 and make the sphere appear just as your spiky sphere explodes. Now we will work on the vacuum sequence, when it feels like the ball is absorbing the dust. For that we will duplicate the donuts, create a new instance of its material, and change its color to make it brownish. Keyframe the visibility of each donut, so the blue one is visible until frame 18 and then disappears, and the brown one starts being visible at frame 18. Keyframe the scale of the brown donut so it's smaller on frame 28. Remember to use S to scale and Shift Z so it scales on everything but the Z axis. It should start looking like the blue donut is expanding due to the explosion and the brown one gets absorbed. Next, we need to make it look like the dust gets dismantled and absorbed by the ball. We'll use the same particle and explode modifier than for the spiky sphere. Add those modifiers again in the proper order, particle system first, then the explode. I may not have done it on screen yet, but uncheck the dead setting in your explode modifier. This will make your dead particles disappear once the lifetime is over. In your particle settings, change your number to 2000, adjust the frame starts to be on frame 19 and the end frame 28 and make its lifetime to 4. Then go back to your force field and keyframe its strengths so the value changes from 500, which we had set previously, to minus 2000 on frame 19. With a negative value, the force field will have the opposite effect than previously and will attract the particle towards it. You can also tick absorption. Once again, once you are happy with your results, 
cache your particle system. You can also animate your sphere so once the absorption effect starts, the ball gets smaller. This should give it a nice sort of compression effect, as if a lot of matter was getting in a very unstable small volume, therefore releasing a great explosion energy after the fact. Now the finish touch. We will make the beam also deintegrate. At this point, you know the drill, create an explode modifier and particles. But this time, select cut edges and size on the explode modifier. Change the number to 500, change your starts value to 15, your end value to 28, and your lifetime to 8. Again, feel free to play with these values, I'm just giving them as reference. Under render, change from halo to object and select your sphere. This will use a sphere as a particle and it will look like the beam dissipates into smaller spherical particles. Tweak the size value on the render so the particles are not too large. Then bake it. To finish, keyframe the visibility of your sphere, the beam and the brown donuts so they are not visible after frame 28. Et voilà, this is what we've done and this wraps up this video. Honestly, it took me a while to make everything and it was way more work than I expected to make this tutorial. So any support, like, comments, subscribes will be very much appreciated. And let me know if you are interested in part 2 for the second phase of that effect, which is the release and explosion. I will work on it if this video gets enough love. Thanks, ciao!